This topic is about gauging. Apical gauging. Apical gauging is, definition of gauging is a measurement Okay, and when we gauge the Termus Veru Canal, we're measuring the apical diameter. Okay, it's remarkable to me that virtually all techniques taught to date in the world, with all the different instruments, almost none of them talk about apical gauging. Without apical gauging, you can never know what the original anatomy was like. You can't make a decision about what the apical prep you're working on should be. You're going to be left to using anatomic statistics, which have no bearing on the case that you're in. Okay, uh, understanding the average anatomic statistics as to where you should treat it or how big it should be, totally irrelevant on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, gauging is going to be done uh, at this point with nickel titanium K files. Why nickel titanium? Because they are more expensive. That's because their hyperflexibility will allow more accuracy. If you're in a canal that looks like this, and the end of the root canal is big, you're not going to be able to tell it with a stainless steel file because it's going to bind laterally. Its stiffness is going to tell you that this is a 20 terminus when actually it's a 30 or a 40. And that's the setup for an overfill. Okay, we're going to get back to that. Okay, so we're going to use nickel titanium K files as radial feeler gauges. Radial feeler gauges. Okay, what's a feeler gauge? In automobile mechanics, we have a spark plug with a cathode and an anode. And we need to know what this gap is right here. Because if the gap's wrong, we're not gonna get the right spark, right? So we take feeler gauges, which are a bunch of little thin sheet stock of shim material, each of them with a different thickness, and we put them in there until we find one that just lightly binds it. Then we look at it and it says, whatever, 0.013 inches. And we either say, hey, it's right, or we need to change it. Um, what we're gonna do here is we're going to use the inside of a round space, or a relatively round space. We're going to use a file. And because it's got an O2 taper, and because they're listed in their apical diameters, so if this is a 30K file, we know it's 0.3 millimeters, about an inch back, a millimeter back. With an O2 taper, we can be assured in a previously shaped canal that this is the only place the file is going to touch in the root canal. So if it slips through the end, we know it, the, you know, the root canal must be larger than 0.3 millimeters. What we're looking for is which one binds, like we have here, right at length. Okay? Because that tells us which shaping file we need to end up with. If we cut a 2006 GT or GTX file to length. We don't know if the apical preparation is complete. We gauge, we put a 15 in there to assure patency. We put a 20 in, hoping it'll bind at length. Into the root canal is 0.3, so the 20 slips through. Now that it doesn't have the coronal tooth structure to bind its shank ends, and the 30 binds at length. If we put a 40 in there, it might step, it should step back. If a 30 binds at length, then we need to get a GT or GTX file, some type of an instrument that has the same tip diameter as the gauging instrument. And for, if it's a small canal, let's say we take a 3006 to length, we gauge again, the 20 should slip through, the 30 should still bind at length, and the 40 should step back with a no taper about a millimeter and a half. On occasion, you will have the experience of gauging and having a 30 bind at length, you cut a 30, oh, whatever, there, and now you gauge again, and a 40 goes to length. That's not 
the way it's supposed to work out. At the end of the root canal is 0.3 millimeters and you put a 3006 or 3008 to length, it should still be a 30 at the terminus. When you have increasing gauging file sizes, that usually speaks to uh, erroneous length determination. Usually it's because you're long. So if this binds at, at length or beyond at, at, with a 0.3 millimeter tip file and I put a 3006 or 308, a millimeter long, if it was a 3006, it'll be a 36 at the terminus. If it was a 3008, it'll be a 3008 at the end. And that's how a 40 could go to length. Usually when you find this out, it's great news because you're done. You've got taper to the end of the root canal. The whole deal is, does the taper go to the end of the root canal? Okay. Does it look like this? Which is the setup for every overfill you probably had in your practice. We put a cone in here that is smaller than the terminus. This is a little tricky to draw. Okay. It's only going to bind here and that guy is certainly going to fly through the end of the root canal. If it's a curved canal, it's ripped. That's even worse. Gauging is intended to find out what is this diameter so that we can put a GT file in there and cut a shape. Say this is a 2006 file sitting in there. The tip of the 2006 is loose. When I put a 3006 in there, with the same taper, the 06 taper, here's what we see. Just a little bit more taper through the rest of the length of the root canal and the taper goes all the way to the end. When I have a cone fitting one half millimeter short, binding at its tip, I can't overfill. I can't overfill. If I have taper to the end of the root canal and I have a gutta perch cone fitting a half millimeter from length, all these measurements are accurate. You couldn't overfill if you tried. The only way that it could happen is by accident. If you put the electric heat plugger too close to the end of the gutta percha cone, it might squirt it through. With a plugger and a heat carrier, you couldn't pound it through if you tried. So gauging is the key to all of your accuracy. Okay? Gauging equals apical accuracy. So when I was in this kind of a route in front of a bunch of grad students, using stainless steel gauging files and thought I had continuity taper with a 2006 file, um, I gotta tell you, it was a real learning experience to fly four millimeters of gutta percha through the end of the root canal. And this is what taught me I need nickel titanium for the flexibility. These do not wear out. You can autoclave, the, autoclave them forever and uh, they take very little uh, stress. So uh, you just have them in your endo kit um, for repeated cases.